So, Matt Reif. In today's video, we're going to be looking at all of the controversy surrounding TikTok's most handsome comedian. And that's mainly because he calls himself that. I'm good looking. I don't like it any more than you guys do, okay? This is not good for comedy, okay? Do you know what would be good for comedy? Writing funny material. I don't think your looks really matter, to be honest. That's kind of just offensive to all other comedians, isn't it? Like, you have to be bloody ugly to be funny. Um... I don't know. Have you seen Theo Vaughn? He's a funny man. I'm not saying anything else on that matter. Just gonna leave that penny in the air. But Matt Reif is in trouble. He made a joke in his Netflix special which has annoyed 99.999% of people who watch Matt Reif. Because his audience is mainly women. And I'll play the joke for you now if you haven't seen it. Comedy is subjective by the way, so if you do find it funny, that's good on you. But a lot of people don't. But what I will say is, just to preface this, it's a joke. It, it's not serious but you know you can't really complain if people get upset because that's what might happen if you tell a joke that people don't like that's the risk that's where the fun of the game of comedy comes from unlock all your doors dude. like you don't no middle ground ever man i've only been to baltimore one time i ate lunch there and the hostess who like seats you at the restaurant had a black eye a full black and it wasn't like what happened yeah, it was pretty obvious what happened and we couldn't get over the fact that we're like this is the face of the company like this is this is who you have greeting people and my boy who i was with was like yeah i feel bad for her man i feel like they should you know, put her in the kitchen or something where nobody where nobody has to see her face you know and i was like yeah but i feel like if she could cook she wouldn't have that black eye <laughs> Look, that joke doesn't upset me because of the fact that it's about domestic violence. It upsets me because anybody in their mother could have written that. Like, you get a Netflix special and this is what it is nowadays, man? What happened to Bo Burnham, you know? What happened to Shane Gillis? What happened to stuff like that? Why is this the level now? Now, Matt Reif is mega famous for being a TikTok comedian and... Frankly, it's quite obvious that he absolutely hates it. Like, he can't bear that at all. Not only does he hate being a TikTok comedian, he hates his audience. Now, this is something that I have found in many people, right? I have met so many YouTubers who have grown to despise the stuff that made them a millionaire. And I sit there and I go, oh, so what, did you only do it for money? Did you only do it to get a leg up? And now that you're at the top, you're going, well, actually, I want to be respected. And by that... Matt Reif desperately wants men to watch him. Now, I'm a man, I watched that, and I went, it's fucking shit. He's lost me. But he's clearly not coping very well with the fact that he's basically thrown away his old audience, and he's not gaining a new one, to the point where he just beefed a child on Instagram. Yes, like a literal six-year-old. Matt Reif has decided to start beef with my six-year-old child online. Yeah, you heard me correctly, my six-year-old child online. So... My name is Bunny Hidea. If you don't know me, Hidea means gift. And this is my gift to you, reading Matt Reif to Phil. Like Matt, I have a full female audience online. Although I like mine. I don't want the men, you can keep them. Please, I will gladly take your audience because we know you can't satisfy them anyways. This all started when his comedy special, which if that's what we're calling comedy, one of the things he said that weren't even funny were posted on TikTok and I started being tagged in them because everyone knows that my son is like a genius and he's really into space. I love this video so far. Uh, just the humble brag that a son is a genius. But this is the thing. Compared to Matt Reif, he looks like one. You may be wondering, I don't understand how a six-year-old could be getting into beef with Matt Reif after seeing this video. I don't know what's going on, Alex. Well, it's all based on the planets. Yeah. Fiercely protect my child online. I'm not a family channel. People know his name. They know he likes space. They know he likes Minecraft. And that's pretty much it. Most people do not know any personal details about my child. And because of that, and because I have such a large audience, when I see people in person and when people see space clips, they tag me in them because they know that that's what he likes. This is the video that I posted. Nothing to do with the stars, man. Just because Jupiter has a ring and you don't, doesn't mean- Hopefully it's Saturn to ask the rings. And it has more also, and you're mean to girls. So that's the clip, right? What you just saw there. Just a kid, just dissing him. Now I'm pretty sure Saturn actually does have a ring, but I'm not gonna sit here and just kind of dog at a child. That doesn't seem fair. He did get it wrong though. I googled it. 
so I must be right. Jupiter's rings were discovered in 1979. That's from NASA, by the way. I, I, look, it's there. Proof in the pudding. I didn't just make that up, okay? Matt Reif sort of slayed on this one. But let's face it, he meant to say Saturn. We know that. Now, you may be wondering, what was his, like, obviously ordinary and normal response levied back at this child? Was it funny? He's a comedian. Matt Reif commented, Jupiter also has a ring. Oh, and Santa Claus isn't real. Your mum buys your presents with the money she makes on OnlyFans. Good luck. He's losing his bloody mind, isn't he? Look, it's one thing, right, that the Netflix special should be like the biggest part of your career, and I get that. And honestly, congratulations on that. It's a big success. But to then try and rewrite on Netflix who your audience are, basically disrespect your old audience in the hopes that it will appeal to new people, you're like when a kid bullies their mate because they want to be friends with the people who bully them. It just looks pathetic. You don't need male audience. You're doing very well with the audience you had. Just do your crowd work and have fun. Like, it's one of the best jobs in the world. I don't understand why you would be so set on pleasing other comedians to the point where you could be part of their little clique just because you want to go on the Joe Rogan podcast. You're so successful that they'd have you on regardless. Like, I know people disrespect him. I I've seen it. I get where he is. I do understand that Matt Rye feels like he is not exactly respected in his community. But the way you do that is you work on good material and you prove them wrong. You don't just go, yeah, I hate women now. Is that what men like? The thing is now other clips are surfacing of Matt Rife that honestly I had never seen before and were really weird. So he used to be on this TV show called Wild and Out and it was meant to be like a diss comedy show. I don't really understand it, not really something that I personally watch. I prefer to stick on Spongebob. It's more my speed. But let's watch this clip and see how strange it is. Spit that water out so I can get your number, please. I can't, I didn't touch it. She can handle herself. Don't be touching on her like that. She too young. You know, I mean, it's a TV show, but I think going up to women you barely know, even if it is on a TV show and just grabbing them by their mouth like that, it's a bit weird. It's a bit odd. Not something that personally I would be doing. But hey, man, each their own. Um, who knows if, if Zendaya was okay with that. It seems by the reaction of the people, although played off jokingly, that they're kind of like, uh, step back, you strange man. It's hardly the most egregious clip. But I think it more just shows that Matt Reif isn't that funny. And the thing is, there are so many tweets now that are coming in, just basically summing up exactly why people aren't really a fan anymore. The way women catapulted Matt Reif into popularity, and the second he gets a comedy special on Netflix, he immediately betrays them with a joke about domestic violence. Crazy, isn't it? Now, look, I understand why this is deep to people. They probably have gone through stuff that's similar. His audience is entirely women. He probably should have realized that this one wasn't gonna land. Maybe in the rooms that he wanted it to land in, but, you know, it's highly unlikely that it's the most highbrow comedy. You know, it's not exactly a joke that needed to make it into a Netflix special. And obviously, comedy is meant to make people laugh. Like, the idea is that you laugh at the obscenity. He's not going, domestic violence is funny. He's meant to be going, bloody hell, what a horrible situation. You could laugh at kind of how insane it is. I think I don't need to explain how jokes work. I think you guys are smart enough. But I think it's quite understandable that a lot of people watched it were like, this isn't what I turned up and paid for. And they were disappointed. And they're just expressing that. I think a lot of people were saying that Matt Rife's been cancelled. But I wouldn't really say that. I just say that his audience has gone, oh, um, this isn't actually what I find funny. I just saw 10 second clips of him on TikTok. Well, I won't buy this again. Now, Matt Rife decided to respond to all of this with an apology. And um, it went down really well. If you've ever been offended by a joke I've told, here's a link to my official apology. And when you click on the link, it takes you to um, a place where you can buy special needs helmets. Look, he's a comedian, man. He tells jokes. They're not meant to have people be victims, but I feel like the audience feel like he's punching down on people. They thought he was their hot and handsome crowd work comedian who kind of like 
bantered back and forth with people who were a bit silly, and now he's telling edgy jokes, which wasn't really kind of the forte for the stuff that they've seen on TikTok. I think he underestimated who his audience is, to be honest, quite massively. Now, Matt Reif has his own little philosophy about why people hate him, and I've seen a lot of people take this same kind of, I guess, stand against hate that they get online. Tana Mojo, out of all people, puts him in his place pretty well. That's the thing, I don't really hate anybody, but I don't, here's, here's a very humbling, experience that I've uh, sorry I guess epiphany that I've had recently and that because so many fucking people hate me for really no reason mm. and it really made me realize that like people only hate somebody they're jealous of and I've been I've been guilty of hating people and when I really sat back and thought about it, it was because I was jealous of where that person was in their life I felt like maybe they got an opportunity that I should have gotten that was yeah. a really really good well-rounded answer I'm trying to wrap my Thank head you. around do you think people who hate Osama bin Laden are jealous of him? I think it says a lot when Tana Mojo is uh, funnier than the comedian. She is pretty funny, to be fair. Her podcast is uh, decent. I've watched some clips. But then, just like Matt Reif, who knows? TikTok clips don't always tell the whole story. It's clear that Matt Reif is now saying that people are jealous of him because of the success he has. And I'm sure it's more of a mechanism to kind of defend himself. It's one of those things where if you're on the internet and loads of people watching you, you get a lot of feedback coming your way, especially if you're as popular as Matt Reif is. So I'd assume he's doing that mainly to try and keep his own sanity in check. I wonder if it's kind of working for him now. Maybe not. Personally, the thing that I find annoying about Matt Reif is that he constantly mentions how good looking he is now on like every podcast. It's almost like his personality is like, oh, the crowd work and oh, nice jaw mate and look if it works for you it works for you but it's not for me i don't want to have to watch somebody constantly go on about how they look every time a microphone is put in front of their face but then there was controversy about that because apparently his face isn't even real or something i can't even believe that this is something that people even talk about who cares if he got plastic surgery let the man live if he did it he can but i think people are upset because they say that he isn't honest about it and um there was this weird video posted <laughs> Now there's multiple things that are weird about this video is that it's clearly insinuating that he did Matt Reif's jaw surgery. This is a guy who's like a famous plastic surgeon. Not only is that illegal, by the way, because of like, you know, client confidentiality, but it is also just a weird thing to make, you know, if he did get jaw surgery, that's up to him on whether he wants to release it. it. Making a TikTok to boost your weird surgeon TikTok followers, why does a surgeon have TikTok anyway, is very strange. What an odd little character. And talking about the stuff that I personally find annoying about Matt Rife, it's clips like this. Internally, I know what you guys want. You want to see the crowd work thing, but that's not who I am and it's not what I do entirely. So bear with me. Give yeah. me a chance. Let me show you what the rest of the show is. And if you're lucky, I'll do the thing you want me to do. Yep, but don't, right. don't <laughs> come and expect you're all your best right. behavior. Exactly. Yeah. I will make fun of all of you to your faces. <laughs> oh, yeah. But if you're the girl who comes and wants to yell out and like to get <laughs> attention to be the next TikTok, it's like, I'm not going to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to be rewarded for bad right, behavior. Right. I'm not a jukebox. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's always the person who wants the most attention who's right. probably the least interesting person you're going right, to talk right, right. to. Did they want you to roast them do they yeah. know what's coming their way because i feel like at a comedy show i'm trying to hide so that the comedian doesn't see me because i don't want to be called out in any capacity well it's because you're a mature adult <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know you know to go to an event and not try to make it about mm -hmm, yourself right. selfishly but i i say like i said i get it so many people who come to my shows have never been to a comedy show before ever but there's still a level of respect and kind of common sense like you wouldn't go to hamilton and stand up and be like <laughs> right. roast me it's quite clear that matt rife has a huge gripe with the audience that he's created for himself but the thing that i would say to him the best advice i could give him would be mate just like that's what it is it was either this or nothing it would be fascinating to see the direction he goes off with all of the jokes that he's currently doing I personally don't think he's going to have an audience that was die hard as the one before. He's a new age comedian. I think comedy is changing. And I think it's moving more towards like the TikTok crowd work thing. And I know he says he isn't all that. But frankly, you are the thing that most people know you for. And I know that sucks. As somebody who makes content as well, I feel ya. It's horrible. I don't like it sometimes. I go to bed and I go, I wish people would watch my other stuff. I, I liked this thing a lot that I made and it didn't get as many eyes as this thing that I guess I'm not so fond of. But then, thank God anybody's watching really at the end of the day. Thank God that you get a Netflix special. Maybe don't use your first one to destroy your audience. Maybe gradually put those jokes in, you know, move it forward and also make them funny. 
I love it because like the women will come to the show so passionately. And, and by the way, this has changed a lot. Yeah. Up until like April this year, it was like it's so funny watching him talk about his own audience with such disdain to the point where it almost seems like that he just wants to piss women off intentionally. And now that joke that we watched at the beginning of this seems to have a whole new meaning because it seems like he's genuinely trying to push the women out of his audience. So what, it's just men? But why? Why do you need male approval? They're just people at the end of the day. Who cares? 90% women come into these mm -hmm. shows, which weren't always for the right reasons. And they got there, and maybe they didn't like my comedy, and they go, well, maybe I wasn't a fan for the right reason, which is fine. I appreciate the immediate support, but like, yeah. I'm, I'm a comedian more than anything else. For the right reasons? Do you mean because you got a nice face? Is that what you mean, Matt? Like, maybe you shouldn't say stuff like this on podcasts. It makes you come across pretty unbearable. Like, I'm, I'm gonna do the comedy I want to do. I'm not going to pander to the, what right. girls want me to do with the, the fucking belt thing that went viral yeah. for no reason. <laughs> um, so they bring their boyfriends or husbands who are always reluctant because they fucking probably bought the tickets. Right. They didn't want to be there. And then like 20 minutes into the show, they realize like my, my comedy is so much more for guys than it is girls. It's could, so you funny. You see their me. shoulders like start to relax. Like oh, their, yeah. Their arms, like yeah. They're, they're drinking their drink more. Oh, they're yeah. another my, drink. <laughs> my live shows to me, I, I've always gone for the tone of like, I just wanted to feel like a hangout with the boy. But like... I don't believe that at all. I've seen you undo your belt in a TikTok. You referenced it in this video. You know, you constantly go on about how good looking you are. You got clips about how good looking you are. Is that going to be for me? For the lads? Sorry. That's what I, that's what I, I'm the lads. I don't know what the obsession is with wanting an entirely different audience to the one that you intentionally curated. I guess because you've gone to other circles and people have just downplayed what you've done or you feel like they look at you differently and don't respect you because of the content. But why would you want to be friends with people who don't respect you because your audience is female? I have felt the same, by the way, before. I've had people go, Oh, yeah, well, people only watch your videos because they're all women. And that is one of the things that I have had levied at me by other people that I've known before. And I was always like, who fucking cares, man? All right? Like, I made my videos because I like them. And if it just so happens that women are more inclined to enjoy them that way, then, oh, no, shoot me dead. I don't understand this obsession with trying to constantly please everyone. If you're a comedian who genuinely believes in his comedy, then you know it will find the audience that it's meant to find. But I think he's kind of a bit miffed that the women won't really like it, and a bit annoyed that the men don't really like it, and now he's stuck in this weird kind of space where people are like, oh, I'm a man and I don't really want to go watch Matt Reif, and the people who do want to go watch Matt Reif, he goes, oh, you're stopping these people from coming and watching. When in reality, it's probably not that deep, just write something that's funny! If you're a good comedian, You'll be found funny just by people who have good taste in comedy. And that shouldn't be just stuck on a gender or whatever. It's truly fascinating to watch somebody tank their career based on trying to please a bunch of people who have podcasts. They're not as funny as you think they are. And I know they might be people that you want to impress, but who cares about them? Just make good shit and then if people turn up and watch it, be thankful that they do. It's really not that deep. Trying to curate your own audience into being men by talking about it on the podcast and trying to like will it into existence just comes across as cringe and desperate, to be honest. Well, that's it for this Matt Rife video. That's everything that he's been up to and done and whatever. It's a real shame because I actually found quite a few of his clips funny and it seems like he has succumbed to a lot of personal pressure on the idea that he's now good looking even though that's I guess what he wanted which is why he worked out and tried to make himself better looking and whatever. So if it isn't the consequences to my own actions Matt. And look don't be so desperately trying to impress men because it doesn't even impress them it just looks cringe and the type of people who will turn up and watch your shows are unbearable assholes. So if that's what you want enjoy that. They'll be fun to talk to in the street when they heckle you all the time and they're weird. Alright, I'll see you guys in a new video soon. I love everyone who watches my content. Unless you're a woman. Bye!